What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. In this quick optimization guide, I'll show you how to get the most out of the Black Ops 7 open beta. Quite a few things have changed since my previous optimization guides for COD related games, so make sure to stick around through this video for the best optimization tips. That being said, we're only going to touch on the in game graphics options, so if you'd like even more out of your system, make sure to check out the description down below for related optimization guides on Windows, your NVIDIA graphics card, etc. So without further ado, let's begin. I've just hopped into the basic training here to give you a general ballpark idea of what kind of FPS you should be getting. I'm using a 3080 Ci playing at 2K, and I'll quickly just run through the different graphics presets so you can see what's going on. By default, as soon as I hopped in, I'm setting around 75-ish FPS, and I have benchmarked absolutely everything. I'll pause the game, head across to Options, then Graphics, and on the Quality tab, I'll start with the Graphics preset. So, the absolute minimum settings here set me at around 101 FPS, 104. Basic, still around the same. Balanced, a drop to 95, 96. Ultra, a further drop down to 80. And finally, Extreme, a drop down to 78, 79. Obviously, 100 FPS isn't the best that we can be getting, and even with the lowest in-game settings of just minimum, we'll absolutely smash the 100 FPS that I'm getting right now when we follow through with this optimization guide. But of course, to start off, let's head into the Settings menu, Graphics, and we'll start off on the Display tab. First of all, your display mode should be set to full screen exclusive for the lowest input latency, highest FPS, etc. But bottomless full screen is fine, especially if you like tabbing out. Display monitor, display adapter, obviously set your highest performance GPU in your system and your correct monitor. That's a no-brainer. Screen refresh rate and display resolution should absolutely match your display, and they're only able to be changed if you're in full screen exclusive mode. Everything else, they should be locked. Then aspect ratio, your preference. Restart shaders preloading is useful to return to and click once you're done with this optimization guide. Display gamma 2.2 is perfect for most displays. Gamma brightness, your preference. Personally, I leave these at 50. Anything higher in the game gets a bit washed out. NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency, obviously only available if you have an NVIDIA graphics card. I'd recommend setting this to on, but only set it to on plus boost if you have a really low powered CPU. Setting it to on plus boost did cost me about 2 to 3 percent FPS while benchmarking, so on is what I'll be leaving it on here. Then scrolling down, Sustainability, Eco Mode Preset, set this to Custom. Right below this, VSync Gameplay, set this to Off. VSync Menus, 100% is fine. And under the Custom Frame Rate Limit, choose Custom. And in here we can set our FPS limits. Gameplay, I have it all the way maxed. Menu FPS, 120 is more than fine. Although you can cap this to 60 or even lower if you'd like to save on power usage and especially heat generation in between maps, etc. Give your PC some time to cool down. And finally, out of focus, 30 FPS is perfect. If you're tapping into Discord, YouTube, things like that, and all of those things are lagging, you can lower this even further. Reduce menu render resolution. There's a couple of different options here. A bit annoying to what exactly these are, but they mainly have to do with the quality of this dude walking around. Here's native, here is optimal, and here is maximal. Previously, I did see a big difference between these, but here I don't really see anything, to be honest. Have this set to whatever you want. It doesn't really matter for actual gameplay FPS. Pause game rendering. I recommend leaving this to off while it has no impact in gameplay. Whenever you enter the pause menu, it'll display a black background instead of letting you see through to the game. Reduce quality when inactive. Set this to whatever you want. Doesn't really matter for the most part. And finally, focused mode. If you have multiple monitors, will darken your other monitors by this percentage. Percentage. Usually I leave this on zero. Personally, I believe drawing on other monitors could cause some kind of FPS impact, but eh, who cares really? Zero is perfect. If things are distracting you, just minimize them. Finally, HDR, your preference. If you have an HDR display, go wild. Otherwise, you can't do anything here. FPS-wise, there shouldn't be too much of a difference at all. Skipping over the Quality tab and moving to the View tab over here, Motion Reduction Preset, turn this on if you'd like to set these presets here. And of course, this should help minimize motion sickness. Personally, I'll leave this off. Arachnophobia Mode, your preference. Field View, while this does technically affect performance, have this set to whatever you like and leave it there. ADS Field View and Weapon Field View, again, same thing. Whatever you prefer, leave it there. Third Person Field 
of view, vehicle field of view, you get the point. Then down to camera, world motion blur, always have this turned off so you can more easily snap onto people, things like that. Weapon motion blur, doesn't usually matter, it's how much your weapon blurs while you're looking around. Again, personal preference, on or off is fine here, just make sure you leave world motion blur turned off. Then camera movement, you can set this to least for first person and third person, just so there's less head bob and things like that. Third person ADS transition, your preference. And finally, inverted flashbang, turning this on will make a flashbang flash black instead of white. Personally, I do like this, but you can't think your PC's just crashing or turning off mid gameplay. Now, onto the quantity tab. Here's where things get interesting. Well, I did run through the graphics presets. There's a couple of interesting nuggets in here. So for now, I'll just hop into the training course just to give you a visual difference. And of course, the map is static. Nothing's moving in it. It should give you a good idea. Obviously, it's not a one-to-one -one match with an actual online game. People will be running around, explosions, gunshots, etc. But here, at least, things are consistent. So hopping straight into game here, pausing options, graphics. I'll start off at the very top here. Skipping over graphics preset, which I would recommend starting on minimum and working your way up with just a few options. The first option that's going to make a massive difference to your FPS and how the game looks is upscaling and sharpening here. There's a ton of different options, including AMD FSR 3 and 1, Find Lily FX CAS, also an AMD thing, NVIDIA DLSS, DLIA, NIS, and finally XESS, as well as OFF. Obviously, OFF is not the best thing to have, but if you set it to OFF, you'll get pure raw native gameplay, although your FPS will definitely suffer. For me, it got a lot blurrier simply because at the very top, render resolution can be set for just two of these options being off as well as FX CAS. So just pure native raw performance, 107, 108. To not bore you with the specifics, the most performant ones of these on my NVIDIA system have been, surprisingly, FSR 1, giving better performance, 1 to 1, than FSR 3. Here's FSR 1 on quality, 123 FPS, versus FSR 3 at around 105 FPS. For the most part, clarity in motion is very important here. So FSR 3 should be infinitely better than FSR 1, so the quality hit is definitely worth it. Just look at this truck over here and the weirdness that's happening here versus FSR 3, where that motion weirdness is completely gone. Then, should you choose DLSS or NIS? Well, personally, NIS set to quality. We've got that weird thing happening with the truck again. And personally, it looks quite a bit blurrier than DLSS. Obviously, performance-wise, 108 DLSS versus NIS's 122, 123. Obviously, the newer, better technology is, of course, better. So even though you would lose a handful of FPS using FSR 3 or DLSS, those are definitely the visually superior options. Then for DLSS, we've got DLSS, CNN, and Transformer. That's just the newer and the older model, the older model being Transformer, performance-wise, 106, 107 on CNN versus 99100 on Transformer. I'm pretty sure you'll need a more modern graphics card to use CNN. Maybe not. Somebody might have to correct me there. But for the most part, if you choose DLSS, definitely choose the newer CNN model much better. Sharpness is obviously your preference. Then for the other ones here, including FX CAS, which if we enable, performance-wise, 104, not bad, but it's about the same as native. Obviously because this is just for image sharpening versus native where we don't have that sharpening. 105, 106 for a 2 FPS cost, the sharpening is quite nice. Finally, DLAA just upscales your native resolution and makes the game look so much better, but obviously you'll be losing a ton of FPS, 86, 87. Now you will have noticed also, variable rate shading is an option that turns on and off. We have it on FSR1, CAS, and NIS. Everything else has it grayed out. Turning this on and off, I didn't see a difference, nor did I feel a performance difference through testing. Finally, XESS, I did test, and there are a ton more options here for performance presets, all the way from Ultra Quality Plus at 93 FPS down to Ultra Performance 117 FPS. Again, this is a relatively nice option. XESS has come a really far away, and it's definitely a somewhat competitor with the DLSS and FSR, which is nice to see. Personally, though, the least blurry and the one that I would recommend is FSR 3 set to quality mode or 
on NVIDIA GPUs, NVIDIA DLSS set to quality once more using the CNN option at the very bottom. That's it. Then moving past upscaling frame generation, while this does give you a handful of more FPS and being above 120 is the perfect time to use frame generation in that you shouldn't get too much extra input latency in real life terms, 140 FPS with it on versus 110 with it off, the input latency is absolutely massive. I definitely would recommend completely against using frame generation at all. Then moving down further, VRAM scale target. I've seen a lot of people in my previous videos saying set this to 60 or 70 for better performance in gameplay. In real terms, on most graphics cards, you shouldn't really need to worry about this. You can leave this all the way up and use as much VRAM as your system has available. My graphics card is a 12 gig VRAM graphics card, so I've got a ton of headroom to use higher quality textures and things like that. This VRAM target doesn't seem to do all that much. Maybe in Warzone and bigger maps, I'd recommend leaving it on 60, 70, because a lot of the time it should increase stability and things like that. 70 is the default. It's fine. That's what I'll recommend leaving leaving it on, but you can raise this if you see fit. Then moving down to details and textures, there's a ton of options from this point on. So I'll only say start off with the graphics preset set to minimum, which lowers absolutely everything beyond this point to the lowest setting. There's a couple of freebies here that I definitely recommend raising pretty much no matter what. My game's sitting at around 110 FPS and we can make it look so much better by raising the texture resolution as high as our graphics card will allow. You'll see the bar moving in the bottom right towards or further away from my target. The only thing that I would recommend though is setting this only up to normal and absolutely no higher in any circumstances. For texture filter anisotropic, you can set this all the way up and forget about it. It should make textures look ever so slightly better just by filtering them before it applies it to objects, things like that. Performance wise, it's almost exactly the same and things should look so much better from weapons to player models, cars, etc. Even the ground or walls. Here's the thing about setting it too high for some unknown reason. Of course, Call of Duty thinks, hey, if you have your texture quality set to high, we're going to go ahead and download super high quality textures off of our servers. If you watch the FPS counter in the top left, you'll see it's around 110, but oftentimes it'll drop to 60, 80, and it's just all over the place. Whenever I have texture quality set to the highest option of high, for some reason, it chooses to push on demand texture streaming all the way to the limit and download as much as possible, even if these options are set all the way down. As you can see throughout testing here, if I hover over daily download limit, just under on demand texture streaming, in the past day it downloaded 2.7 gigs of textures. This only happened when I turned my, don't know why I can't scroll up any further, that's fun, texture resolution up to high, so always leave this at normal, and it shouldn't be downloading textures off of the internet, saving you from weird frame studies and things like that. Actually very, very annoying, and while I do have high quality textures on my system, I assume I just can't use them. Anyways, so texture res, normal at highest, anisotropic filtering, ultra is perfect. At the very bottom here, on demand texture streaming, absolutely set this to minimal, lower the allocated texture cache size all the way down, download them it's on, and set this to just one gig. So if it chooses to download high quality textures, it can't download much at all. Then of course, the rest of the options here have a minimal impact, depth of field I recommend leaving off just for making it easier to spot people, etc. Having a look at my testing results here, detail quality, absolutely no performance impact, particle resolution, no performance impact, but of course explosions, things like that could cause FPS drops, leave it all the way down, bullet impacts, I would recommend turning on. Here's on versus off. Of course, it just makes the game feel a lot better. And there's basically no performance difference. The same thing for persistent effects. I assume great explosions and things like that may add up over time, but for the most part, I don't see a difference here. Maybe in Warzone and things like that, it's worthwhile turning this off. Then shader quality, no difference here personally. Low is fine, whatever. And then moving on to shadow and lighting. Here things do get pretty interesting. So starting off at the very top, shadow quality. Here's very low versus low. There you go. Then normal. This looks infinitely better in terms of player shadows. High. And finally, ultra being the crispest option for shadows. For the most part, while this does affect your performance, in it testing, I moved from 187 on very low to 185, 177, 179, 172. For the most part, normal is what I'd recommend just for much better looking shadows. But if you have to, you can set this down to very low and forget about it. Personally, the blocky shadows do annoy me just a little bit, especially when you're running a pretty good monitor with some pretty good hardware as well. Then moving further down, screen space shadows, no performance difference here. 
occlusion screen space lighting there's quite a few different options here but for the most part i only really saw a performance difference between high and ultra everything else was roughly about the same i started at 173 fps on off high had me all the way down at 171 172 and then jumping up to ultra 168 67 so high is as high as i would go here but for the most part it doesn't really matter off or low is fine i'll set both of these to low then screen space reflections absolutely no performance difference here normal or high is perfect and static reflection quality here i didn't have a performance difference either but low is fine moving down to environment quality starting off with terrain quality i had zero performance difference here though i would assume it has a vram difference on especially low-end graphics card you may be stuck on very low or low but for the most part it doesn't really matter high or medium is fine here Volumetric quality actually did have a performance impact, quite surprisingly, even while there were no volumetrics to be seen. At low, I'm sitting at 100 FPS, 102, medium 97, 98, and high 94, 95. I'm pretty sure it has something to do with the water, maybe something else. I'd recommend leaving this down to low. Deferred physical quality as well was quite a surprising one. On off, I'm sitting at 102, then low 91, 95, we're jumping around quite a bit. And finally, high 93, 94. So there's a pretty small performance impact here, but it's definitely notable. Off is fine here. Weather grid volumes, there was a small difference between off and every other option here. So off was around 180. Everything else was around 176 through 178. So for the most part, leaving off is fine. And finally, water quality. Even while shooting the water, I didn't see too much of a difference here. For the most part, off is perfect, 176 FPS. Everything else here was around 172 through 175. Even while mag dumping the water, it dropped to 165, with only the last option here being all actually dropping me down to 160 while mag dumping. For the most part, off is fine here. So, to recap, basically everything down as low as possible DLSS or FSR3 on quality. If you're using a DLSS, leave it on the CNN model. Texture quality, normal and no higher. Anisotropic filtering, ultra. Everything else, pretty much as low as possible, slash your preference. Shadow quality, normal, just so you don't have blocky shadows. And SSR normal is fine as well. Those are basically the optimized options to get the most out of your game, the best FPS, and the best general experience. While my FPS of 100 doesn't seem all that impressive, when I turn off OBS and I'm just playing the game as usual, I get around 180 to 200 so it's actually really, really solid. But yeah, that's basically that. If you'd like to see more Black Ops 7 related content, do let me know down below. And of course, once the full game releases, you'll find that optimization guide on my channel as well. Speaking of, check the description down below for Windows, NVIDIA, and other optimization guides to get even more out of your system. And finally, if you'd like to open your NAT and things like that to make your Black Ops 7 experience even better, you'll find related guides linked down below as well. So hopefully you found this video useful. Thank you for watching. Mine's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.